Mutala joins me. Uh, he's our court correspondent. Mutala, good morning. Good morning, Sewa. Uh, what do you have for us? Yes. What happened in court uh, uh, yesterday? So yesterday, a whole country was looking at the Supreme Court. Right. And you realized that the issue of the anti-gay bill was to center stage yesterday when everybody was hoping that the Supreme Court was going to make a determination as whether or not to injunct or not to injunct Parliament from transmitting the bill to the president. But of course, the long and short is that the Supreme Court says that they are deferring their uh, decision on the two uh, applications for interlocutory injunction until such time that the substantive matter is heard. The court said that when they unitize the, all the uh, cases together, all the applications and substantive matter, it will help bring, bring some clarity to the issue. But of course, let's go to the Supreme Court and hear the Chief Justice making a ruling on behalf of the panel in relation to Dr. Amanda Odoy's interlocutory injunction. Having therefore diligently analyzed all the material processes on the record in this instant application and listened to oral submissions by learned counsel for the parties, our decision is to reserve our verdict on the interlocutory application until the final determination of the substantive suit, at which point we will render a comprehensive judgment that addresses all aspects of the case, including the current application for injunction. In conclusion, the decision of this court on this application for an interlocutory injunction is hereby deferred to abide the outcome of the determination of the substantive suit. Yes, so that is the Chief Justice get to talk on saying that so this one is in relation to Dr. Amanda Odois interlocutory application. So the right. Supreme Court said that they were giving two separate rulings. Now let's hear from the Chief Justice again in, rela in relation to Richard Sky's application. This court delivered its ruling in the matter of Amanda Odoi versus Speaker of Parliament and Attorney General. The considerations in that matter, in our ruling in that matter, are referred to and adopted herein. In view of the dispute over even critical factual contents of the parliamentary process, this court defers its ruling on the instant application application for interlocutory injunction and a full and complete hearing of the present suit. This is our ruling. Chief Until full and complete hearing of the substantive matter, the court is you're not going to hear any ruling. On, but there are many who are saying that indirectly the Supreme Court has injuncted Parliament from transmitting the bill. We'll be interrogating that very. So what is clear now <laughs> is that the parties have indicated that to help this whole matter, filing a consolidation, consolidating the two cases will help the court. So the court said. The boys in your hand expedite uh, your processes so that it could be here. But of course, let's hear from lawyer for Richard Sky, the plaintiff in the second leg of the case, what he's been saying. Parquisi Abedu. We don't do anything to prejudice the outcome of the application. So we say that invariably, indirectly, it is still restraining any party from doing anything contrary to the demands of the application. I mean, for clarity, as far as you are concerned, we do not expect parliaments to transmit the bill. No, they can't do it so far as this matter is pending. Otherwise, it will amount to contempt of court. When the best of our understanding of the law. When the, when the court speaks about an early trial, in effect, what it means is that it will speed up the process towards the determination of the matter so that this whole issue of injunction before final determination will not, no longer take us that stage. With a, with a legal vacation inside, how soon do you expect this thing to happen? If you have, uh, having in mind that the court is asking you to file your own process and cooperate As an officer of the court, I'm not in the least in the position to dictate the timetable of the court. The, but the farthest I can say is that pleadings have not closed in the matter, as you might have rightly heard from the Attorney General. They are yet to fight their response. And I believe counsel for the first defendant is also yet to file. So until those processes are filed, nobody can tell when we will be giving date for our next appearance. 
So that is uh, Parkwesi Apedu, mm. counsel for Richard Sky, mm. telling us, yes, what the Supreme Court has done, it is still restraining parliament from acting or taking any other step. But let's hear from the man, Attorney General Godfrey Yeboadame. All, all along, he's not stated whether he supports the injunction or he opposes to it. But you can infer from his submission that he is for it. Let's hear from him what he has to say after the decision of the Apex Court. I think that's the main issue. I mean, the point is that the country ought to know that we're a country governed by a constitution. The constitution that prevails over everyone. We're all under the constitution and the laws of God. And therefore, the actions of every person must be determined within the premises of the law. Same as a person can even question my constitutional right to prosecute in this country. We have seen that many times. Um, citizens of the, of, the, of the country, even file petitions, the Supreme Court questioning the Attorney General's power um, to enter and prosecute in a certain matter and that kind of thing. And it comes up for the Supreme Court. It's the same way that a decision or an action taken by Parliament can be questioned by citizens of, of the country. And so, for me, the questions are raised during the hearing of the application for the country injunction, where ones that for me have not been determined in this country, and today it ha has not been determined. It's the very first time that a private member's bill is, um, or issues regarding private member's bill are coming up for determination. But private member's bill are final bill, occurred only in the time of the former parliament, the seventh parliament, headed by uh, Speaker Musa Michael Quinn. It was in his time. So of course, he was with my help as the Jatendra that we all sat down, we had a round table conference, and then we sat down to craft ways of empowering Parliament to um, engender or produce its own bills. And it was in the time of the last Parliament headed by Professor Free that the first Parliament based bill was, 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 was passed. And really was without controversy because it did not have any implications for the taxpayer. Now, these are there are a lot of bills being turned through Parliament now on account of private members, which really have implications for the public voice. And I think for me as the Attorney General of, of the Republic, it's, it's a question of important um, consideration that the court ought to really consider. Because since 1957, as I indicated to the court, since 1957, every constitution the country has had, apart from the 1961, has had provisions on Article 108, which is akin to Article 108 in it. And there has not been any case at all found questioning the circumstances, the ambit, or the extent to which a person can commence a bill which has increased the task clear, but which do not go through the requirements for Article 108. So that is the Attorney General, Godfrey Diebu Adame. He said that, look, the Supreme Court should look at the matter before it and find out if there's, there are any issues of law to answer and make a determination of same. So until further notice, it's been against Senator indefinitely, so we'll hear from. But of course, a legal vacation is just at the corner. So it depends on the time that the, the party is The end of the far. month, right? Come again? The end of this month. Yeah, the end of this month. So today's date is uh, 18. And we are going to enter the thirty first. So you can imagine some few days to go. Then the legal vacations here. And the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeals automatic. As for the High Court, there will be few vacation courts that the Chief Justice will select to sit be dealing with cases that will arise within the time frame. But the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal, uh, two months two month vacation until uh, October. Any case that you count between August one and the end of September. You have to wait for a date in October. So that's what happened in relation to this anti-gay issues at the Supreme Court yesterday. Okay, what more? So yesterday again, I talked to you about the, the train accident, the Tema mm. and Pakadan train mm -hmm. accident, mm -hmm. yes, and the fact that Justice Lady Alsema for yesterday was meeting the parties for case management conference because the prosecution at the last court sitting, didn't, the disclosures filed. The other parties didn't have it, the court didn't have it. Yesterday, all the parties agreed that they have all the complements of the processes that were filed by prosecution and the case management conference held. Now, the prosecution has indicated that they will be parading three witnesses to prove their case. And so Justice Lydia Osema, who has since fixed October 17, 
So you notice that from July, we are going to October. So one of the cases that will have to wait until October is the issue of the uh, Thermatrain uh, accident case. And in fact, four persons are standing, uh, have been charged for abetment. Yesterday, they are on bail, but two of them have been able to meet their bail conditions. Two others could not meet. So yesterday, the lawyers prayed for a bail variation, which the court has accepted, and then varied the bail conditions uh, for them. Instead of two sureties to be justified, the court has made it one, and also mm. reduced the bail stamp from 200,000 Ghana cities to 150. Okay. And so that is in relation to the Tema and Pakada. So October 17, they'll be back in relation to that very case. What more? Cecilia, the past May. mates. Yes, yesterday I was telling you that uh, the lawyers of Patience Bush especially will be moving a motion for the OSP to provide her and the lawyers with some document, derogation, mm -hmm. some investigation, caution statement, and some interviews conducted mm -hmm. uh, when they arrested Madame Cecilia Dapa and her husband mm -hmm. in relation to the sum of money that the OSP discovered after this whole issue broke out. And yesterday, the OSP was in court. I mean, representative of the mm -hmm. OSP was in court to raise an objection against that particular request. But of course, Justice Marie Louis Simon uh, dismissed the objection. So it has now paved the way for the substantive motion for OSP to provide document to be issued. So in the coming days, they'll be back in court for that motion to be moved. So that's what happened in relation to the Cecilia da Paz mates. OK. Um, A bench bank case. Yeah, bench yes. bank. Yesterday, 20th witness. Defense witness for Seidu, uh, I almost said Seidu, I'm going for because the, <laughs> the Google World case is still also lurking around. For Mr. Michael Nineku was in court yesterday, in fact, a very brief testimony before Justice Ipia Sewa Sariboshi. So he read his witness statement, he was cross examined by uh, state prosecutors and discharged at the same time. So tomorrow, the court is expected to sit again, and this time around, looking at the, the witness statement of the 21st and 22nd uh, witnesses for Michael Nineku. They are very brief, so the court has uh, directed that two witnesses be taken at the same time. So tomorrow, Mr. Nineku will call the 21st and 22nd witness to come and testify in relation to that. So these are the cases that took place yesterday as far as the courts are concerned. Okay, what are we expecting today? Yeah, the ambulance case mm. is back on. So this week, the whole of this week, it is only today that it is coming on because of uh, the uh, issue that surrounded the whole thing. So today we expect Mr. Richard Jackpa, the third accused person, to come up with his first witness. At the last court sitting, he was expected to call uh, Samet Sadasti, who happened to be the representative of um, Big C. But that did not happen. He filed a subpoena. The subpoena had been granted. And the kind of people that he wants, the Speaker of Parliament, is in there. Alex Tegbefia is in there. CDS, Chief of Defense Staff, is in, in there. And then some others, in, including the second accused person who has been discharged because the state filed a knowledge prosecutor, Mr. Sylvester Adimana. He said he wants all of them to come to court and testify. Today, he'll be before Justice Ifia Sewa Sariboche to tell the court or to produce his first witness, in fact, in relation to this matter. Earlier, we told you that the court has stopped all the parties from talking in relation to this matter. So this case is coming on today. Then, Saglemi. Chagleme affordable housing case. Yes, that case is also coming on today with lawyers of Al Haji Collins Dauda, the man who has always been in white. Yes, as you can see on your screen, with screen will be in court to subject the second uh, prosecution witness to further cross examination. The last court sitting when he concluded his evidence in chief by way of reading the witness statement, the lawyer started. Justice Ernest Usutapa indicated that, as per the case management completion plan. Lawyers of allergic colonies that have two hours and one outstanding one hour that will be subject to the discretion of the court whether to allow it or not, depending on how the witness answers the questions and all that. So today, Tadio Sori and his team will be, will, be, will be subjecting the second prosecution witness to further cross examination on behalf of allergic colonies that So that is one of the things that we also expect coming out today. Okay. Then, recruitment, alleged recruitments come involving a military officer, one Captain Abel uh, Nati. You notice that last week we told you about the fact that 
it was a subject matter of a bench warrant. And then the army, the Ghana Armed Forces, managed to bring him to the court after the report came out. And then that bench warrant was rescinded. He was granted bail, serve recognizance bail. And today, Captain Abel is expected to appear before the circuit court in relation to the alleged recruitment scam in which he and one other are standing, have been charged for allegedly uh, taking some 136,000 from people that they have, have it, uh, actually to, uh, indicate that they want to enlist them into the military or into the security agency, which they have failed. So that case is also coming. And the last that we expect to come up is the... Uh, Samuel of Usuan uh, allegedly, this issue started long, long, long ago. It's still pending before Justice Samuel Esidu, a justice of the Supreme Court, who is sitting with additional responsibility as a high court judge. So today, Justice and Esidu, and what is expected to happen is that Samuel of Usuan is expected to open his defense. Okay. In fact, for the last two, three sittings, he was being expected. He wasn't well. The lawyers indicated that he's back in court. He came. And then nothing was, we, we understand that he had a, an issue again with the leg, and which was brought to the attention of the court. Evidence was shown to the court, and the court granted that. Instead of two weeks' request, added one more. So today, we expect Samuel of Usman Pofu to be in court. Hopefully, if he's well, he'll be in court, and he'll open his defense in relation to the, the charges that have been pressed against him, together with Kweku Anthony uh, Boahim. Mm. Mm. The two of them are before the court. So these okay. are the cases that we do expect coming on today. Thank you very much, right. Captain. He's our court correspondent.